Hi, my name's Maria. I had a budgie feather in my hair. I just want to say, I filmed this whole thing with a budgie feather in my hair and I cannot leave the budgie feather. Like, I mean, I've left paint on myself while filming deliberately. But the budgie feather was distracting. <laughs> I couldn't even watch it, rewatch it. I have no problem with paint. So there you go. There's some of my idiosyncrasies. Uh, so this person with this idiosyncrasy does like fall or autumn. Um, it is my favourite season, so there's no way in hell I was never going to film the Finally Fall book reading tag because it is so my favourite season. Um, I am considering myself tagged by Fun Size Steffi, or, or Fun Size Steffi, one word. That's her channel name. She's relatively new, and I really do think that if you like personalities, you know, th there's different reasons you watch booktubers, or there is for me. I mean, some of them are extremely good um, um, reviewers. Others you watch for their personality and for their lighthearted selection of books. That's how I would um, describe her channel so far. I've seen two videos and this is a huge shout out to her because I really, really did enjoy them. Um, and she's quite new. Um, so I'm considering myself tagged by her. I will link the original creators below and I will just crack on with the questions. So, because a minute and a half of talking. So, in the fall, the air is crisp. Name a book with a vivid setting. I can just see the good one here, it's crisp. Um, so, a vivid setting. Fiona Mosley's element, okay? Fiona Mosley? See, I have this problem now, because I had to do light, because I had light from this side, from the window, and then I had to put a light there, which is so it's a different color. So that's proper natural light. That's slightly yellowish. It is a pro it's a it's a the best light bulb I could get. But <laughs> no, where do I put this? You know, do 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 do. do, do it here. Should we do it here? We'll do it here. All right. So Elma Fiona Mosley. Fiona Mosley's going to Deer Shed, which is a music festival. It's a family music festival in North Yorkshire next year. North Yorkshire in England. So I'm hoping to meet her and get this copy signed. This book was in the Women's Prize for Fiction, which was the Baileys last year, read by a lot of people. It's a short list or a long list, I don't remember. Um, as it happens, I still have a tag from when I originally read it. Just one left and I have to remember it keeps it. It's actually, one, it's not, a, it's a tag from work, so it's not actually suitable for the books because you can't read through it. Um, so wide open in astonishment, much wider than the eyelids could ever stretch in real life. Like the lad wanted to capture all he could, who could of the world. Like he wanted to take a still image of that pretty little wood, the light coming through the trees, the little flowers beneath the ash and oaks, capture it and take it with him. Just that one still wide eyed picture. Love the settings and the descriptions of places and sounds and foods in this book. Um, so this is my selection for, what's the exact term thing? Name a book of a vivid setting. It's an extremely vivid setting. Um, if you like that kind of thing, read it. Actually, all these books, read them. Um, if it sounds like your thing. See, that, that wouldn't make anybody read any book. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't work in the publishing industry. <laughs> Read it if you want to. Uh, uh, nature is beautiful, but also dying. Mm, let's just go to sleep. Not really dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. This book is was infamous last year, based upon um, Mercy Mercy Days at Mercy's Book of Musings. Written it originally during the Cozy Readathon. And it's The Clay Girl um, by Helen Tucker. Again, this is a very sad um, beginning. Um, a father has killed himself because he's committing, uh, been committing sexual, in front of his children because he's committing sexual abuse against them, or, or some of them, maybe all of them. Um, but Ari in this book and her seahorse are amazing um it's full of her book with a dark premise full of light and hope 
the pros from the beginning when she's a young child to when she's an older ch she's a teenager um is you, you're going to see the light change by the way this because it's autumn look what and the lights changes on them a lot um it's it's heartwarming even though it's really and you it's hopeful and yeah maybe some things are unrealistic in it but you know it's so beautifully written um it's my it was my favorite one of my favorite books from last year so read it if you want to okay i just turned on my laptop again oh that's some of the light that's coming and falling back oh back to the school season so autumn is back to school season i'm gonna be naughty so it's autumn oh, or have i yeah so this one was actually in so it's, it's share a non-fiction book where you learn something new so this is Steve Brissetta's The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs. I learned that the budgie suture have got suddenly gone quiet by the way. What are they doing? Um, are actually dinosaurs. I knew that they evolved from dinosaurs, but birds are dinosaurs. Um, if I am a mammal, a bird is a dinosaur. So that was interesting. And <laughs> this is a mixture of the history of the dinosaurs with the history with the biography of Steve Brissett and his re research to date plus all the people he's met on the way um, so if you like a combination of those both things I do recommend that book and in order to keep warm it's, a, it's good to spend some time with people you love uh, name a fiction family host, ha household friend group that you like to be a part of okay slight difficulty in that I read a lot of dark fiction my literary is dark, okay? Would I want to live, say, in this family? No. Would I like to live in this family? No. Um, I read a lot of horror fiction. Would not like to be in that book at all. <laughs> the fun bit is not being in the book. I read a lot of historical fiction. Mm, there's, can't name any. Um, I read a lot of crime and I kind of go, mm, so we're, we're kind of going to go to the crime and speculative fiction crossover genre. And this is one of my favorite authors. Um, she is of Irish descent, I believe. She's not, she lives in England. So she's, I think her parents are Irish. Um, I'm from Mayo, I believe. Um, but Jess Kidd, the hoarder, um, I loved himself as soon as her book order I knew was coming out her second book was coming out I knew I was going to read this and I will be reading it uh, and so I, I ordered it and I and I, I start I, I dumped what I was reading that day as soon as it came through on the post and started reading this I had to read this tapped it a lot loved it and she has two characters in here who have a friendship that and because of their friendship, one of the characters' lives is saved. And the friendship is really necessary because other characters are not who they first appear to be. So I liked the friendship. So we have Maud, who is our main protagonist. And this is where I keep forgetting who the name, what the name is of our lovely other character. Who's bigger than life? I'm gonna stop you for a second till I find her name. Okay, it was Renata. I just wasn't sure. So Renata, I hope I'm, sp I'm, I'm pronouncing it right. And her have a wonderful friendship. Again, the family of Renata. Typical family, not that great. Renata is a trans woman and um, they, yeah, her sister's a typical sister. You know, she gets annoyed. Renata's not the easiest person to deal with. And she gets annoyed with her and so, when she's annoyed, she calls her him. Um, but that's just typical what siblings would do. Um, you know, just to be vicious. But the friendship between Maud and Renata is, is, is wonderful and central and really important to this book. So that's the one I picked. Um, really must read an awful lot more books with nice families and, and, and friends. Yes, yeah, so and most people for that que this question pick um, the Harry Potter families, the Mosleys. Yeah, that's a good family. I just haven't read it in a long time. 
and do 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 so the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground choose a pile of col fall colored spines if i'm going to take all these books i can't do a pile so i found one with actual leaves on the spine another one that has leaves on the spine so we have the mermaid and mrs hancock and sun 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 jed Sahata, the year of the runaways. My God, I can't pronounce names. I should pick books with only authors that I can pronounce their names off. I guess that would be a way of narrowing them down. Um, so I'm going to use these two. Neither one of these uh, have I read yet. Um, this should be my Christmas big story read. So I'm going to constantly big stories and you know, like you know, how on Christmas Day and it's called St. Stephen's Day here and Boxing Day in England and Scotland and Wales um, but around that by that season the, the our TV usually show big movies and you know they, they you know so I'm thinking the same set of books and I'm not sure about this year the runaways it's a man booker award winner from 2015 if anybody thinks I should read that sooner than later tell us okay the next one um <laughs> Fall is a perfect time for some storytelling by the Fireside. Share a book where someone is telling a story. I'm choosing Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which is Susanna Clarke's um, book. It's based upon the, well, it's based in 1818, during the Napoleonic Wars. So it's the same era that Jane Austen's books were set in. So it's actually pre-Victorian, and I can't think of the name of the, um, he was bloody king or queen at the time. Because it is pre in this stage. Um, and it's the king is mentioned in this book. I can't remember the name of the king. Sorry. So that time. It's a Georgian. It might be Georgian. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, maybe I'm going to have to look this up now. I'm going to give myself future me loads of work to do. Uh, this is a piece of speculative fiction. There is an argument over whether it is fantasy or science fiction. Because alternative words are technically science fiction as I understand it. But this is about magicians. Ha did exist in England and by the Vic by this e era so the early 19th century they haven't really been practicing real um, magic for about 200 years so they're more like academics until Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell will come into the picture during the story the story is told the way that you would expect Bronte to tell it and the narrator talks to you as if she is telling you a story so this is a book that would be like a storybook told to you at a, at a fireside. Um, it's my choice. Um, the nights are getting darker. Uh, a creepy read. Okay, this was incredibly difficult because all my shelves are dark and creepy. I've ended up, because I've just mentioned that I do have a lot of dark reads. I read a lot of horror. I read a lot of darker of the crime novels as well. Um, I read a lot of historical fiction and, and let's face it, the Victorians like to be gothic. Um, so I do have a lot to choose from. So I had to pick one that I felt was really creepy while I was reading. And that's Michelle Favors Under the Skin. And this is an interesting book. It's about a woman who's driving a, a road that I'm very familiar with in Scotland. I used to drive a lot when I lived in Scotland. And she's picking up men. But why is she picking up men? What's happening? Um, I believe there's a film or a movie. And it's not quite the same as this. I do recommend you read this book in if you've read the, if you've seen the movie. Because I, I believe it's quite different. And that you read this one first if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, it, you can't, I can't tell you about it without spoiling what it is that she's doing, but she is not innocent in any way. Um, but maybe she is. There's an author, there's a big theme of loneliness going on through that book as well, and isolation. Um, yeah, she's a very lonely character. Um, very well drawn. So, the, the days are getting cold, her name is Short, Short, couldn't find a short one, 
um, heartwarming read that you could warm up somebody's cold for any day. The problem is this heartwarming read. I don't have heartwarming reads. If you gave me a short, dark read, I could probably do it. So if you want just to concentrate on a warm read, you know, you're feeling pretty miserable and you want to feel a little bit more lighthearted and you want to remember that the sun used to exist. Um, I'm recommending The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon, which lots of people have already seen on booktube. If, so I don't know if you're interested where you haven't read it yet, you should have read it or you have it in your pile and you're, you're feeling a little bit, mm, I could do something like that. Do read it now. Um, set in the summer of 1976. Two main, um, two of the protagonists are little children. Um, they're two little girls. And they're solving the mystery of a neighbour who's gone missing. It's set in a cul-de-sac. The rest of the neighbours have done something quite bad in the past. But because it's written from the innocence of a child, you have this this warmness and this misunderstandings. And they're searching for God because they misunderstood what somebody said. They look for Jesus, I think. And I think... I mean, there's full of comic, comedic um, scenes where a stain looks like Jesus and all the and the neighbours are fighting over who gets to guard the stain. It is not anything you would expect. Um, an utter delight from, by, is by, by Sarah Winman. And yeah, it's delightful. So I do recommend that. And we're getting low close to the end. So, fall, autumn is my favourite season, that's true and returns every year. So name an old fashioned, an old favorite that you would like to return to soon. Now, anybody's watched my rereads video? Um, no, I'll link that down below, why not? I love to reread. So if I have still got any book, I want to reread it. So every single book you've seen, it only exists still within my bookshelves because I want to reread it. I love rereading, so all books, want to be read so I could say that or I could just did do the thing that maybe I should mention though that I'm doing a reread of Stephen King from the start in his order of publication um so we're on and again I don't remember are we on the running man or row work because I skipped one or two of these so I'm, I'm a bit behind my reread it will take four or five years so I'll catch up I try to keep up with the book for the month and if I miss a month and I might miss it this week, this month because of October and the other spooky reads. Notice I don't think Stephen King is spooky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. King. I've read you so often. <laughs> I know what happens. Um, <laughs> but I just thought I'd show, that's the one that I will show for this. Um, so that's the one that obviously he is, obviously, he has been a writer that I read as a teenager and I was a teenager and I'm showing my age in the 1980s so I have been reading him for a long time um, so and he has been writing a lot of books for a long time so yeah that's my um, enjoyable reread uh, so fall is a perfect time for cozy reading night share your favorite cozy reading accessories um, I don't really have any Accessories as in for fall at the moment or for autumn. You have me saying fall. Americans, Canadians. They don't say that in Australia, do we? I don't remember saying that in Australia as a kid. Um, in Ireland and Britain, we definitely say autumn. I can't remember what I said in Australia. <laughs> Which is why my accent is weird, by the way. I do love my scarves. Um, and I do love that the, the, the colours that come in this season. See the colours that come in this season you know it's they've been like you know and they've been crazy these crazy these colors are coming in in trousers i have trousers in this this maroony color autumn colors i have been enjoying that but that's nothing to do with reading i don't have i read everywhere so whenever i can and i read quite slowly so i do have to read whenever i can and whenever i'm not exhausted from work <laughs> so i have no real cozy accessories for reading what I do like to do though is take off these glasses I'm extremely short-sighted so, but so if I if I can't hold a book just right up to my face which means lying down but I don't actually have I can't burn candles because of the budgies um, and a lot of the time I'm reading on a bus or something so right 
so I had a bit of a cough there, sorry about that. So um, the last question is um, the usual tag question, spread the autumn appreciation attacks on people. So if you want, I think most people have done this. If you haven't done it and you want to do it, of course do it um, and consider yourself tagged. Um, hopefully I'll get better at um, tagging people and researching who hasn't done, who has and hasn't done it. Um, I will up be uploading this probably while I'm doing um, taxes and things for people. So it, I might not have my um, thumbnail done properly for that. And I might, it'll probably be just um, booktube selection, well, YouTube selection at that stage, isn't it? Um, so happy autumn, everybody. I hope you're having some nice weather that anybody in Europe who, who got the big wind survived it nicely um, and didn't have any too much damage or anything around them and had no trees falling on them on the way to work or whatever they were going and hopefully see you all next time so bye now